On November 11, 1938, Dr. Eliezer Javier walked the stage of this earth. Born and raised in a Methodist home, his mother dedicated him to the Lord and the ministry of the kingdom. Thus began a journey that would bless generations. Eli gave his heart to Christ as a fourth-year high school student in February 1954 during an Assemblies of God Manila Crusade preached by Lester Sumrall. With the call to ministry burning in his heart, Eli enrolled at the Bethel Bible Institute the same school he would go on to lead as its president in the ensuing years. He graduated on March 17, 1957. Fifteen days later, he was ordained to the ministry. Ellie would serve as a pastor in his home church and subsequently many local assemblies and church associations during his fruitful lifetime. An AB in psychology from PCU in 1962 and the pursuit of higher studies helped hone his pastoral skills. Pastor, how appropriate that sounds. For here was a shepherd who shepherded well, who gave account for the sheep, and like the master, would leave the 99 to search for the straying one. Dr. Ellie married Esther Candelaria. God indeed provided him a partner who would add to the stability of a life that would be given again and again to others in Jesus' name. The images of family would Esther, his beloved wife, his only son John, his daughter-in-law Malou, and his grandson John Matthew would serve notice to others that indeed the family is first and foremost in the heart of the God Eli served, a priority he would espouse throughout all his ministerial life. Dr. Javier was a great communicator, whether it was behind a pulpit, the classroom, a private audience celebrating a birthday, a wedding, a funeral, or a graduation, and who would not forget the true wit of Dr. Eli Javier. I heard a story one time about a schoolgirl who was assigned to make a speech during a PTA meeting. The girl, expectedly, was very nervous. So she sought counsel from her mother and said, what should I do when I stand up there and I feel nervous. So the mother said, oh, it's very easy. Don't look at anybody. Just look at me all the time you're speaking. And you won't get nervous. On the eve of the convocation, the mother fell ill. And so the child was very anxious. And she said, now, mother, what should I do? What should I do? The mother said, well, when you go up the stage to speak and you feel nervous, that means the people like you. I feel nervous this afternoon. <laughs> Indeed, he was a class act. He had excellent facility in both the English language and the heart language of his beloved Taitai. He was a prince of preachers, with a generation of those who sat under his ministry wanting to preach like he did. His gifts brought him to receptive audiences here and across the globe. It could be said like the master who he served that both the learned and the common people heard him gladly. An educator all his life, Dr. Ellie was immersed in the campus life of Bethel Bible College as a member of the board of directors, academic dean, faculty member, and eventually serving as its president. 
Dr. Ellie was a tireless administrator who raised the value of each and every person in the academic community. Those who were touched by his influence never forgot Dr. Ellie's precept that academics were only a means to an end and not the end in itself. He also served as faculty of the Far East Advanced School of Theology, currently Asia Pacific Theological Seminary. He was not only a gifted speaker, but also an accomplished writer. He authored several excellent books published by ICI Ministries. The work of the pastor written in Belgium, Brussels, studies in Christian growth and help. I'm getting married. The camera relished his image as it preserved for posterity two of his most important teachings, Steps to Life with God and a Fresh Look at the Holy Spirit, produced by Asia Pacific Media Ministry. This age has been described by many as the age of the church or the age of the Holy Spirit. There is a renewed interest in the Holy Spirit and His gifts to the church. In fact, it has been reported that the fastest growth of the church are in areas where the ministry of the supernatural, of the Spirit's gifts, are allowed to take place. Let's walk back to the beginning of this century, when an unusual event occurred in 1901 in Kansas, USA. Several Bible school students were baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Several years later, in 1906, in a street similar to this, called Azusa Street in California, the same Holy Spirit was outpoured among the believers who were gathered there. When I regularly go and attend a Christian church or gathering, do I become a Christian eventually? Do you visualize yourself as changing religions? That is, from your present religion, you will transfer to the Christian religion? You do not become a Christian by joining a Christian church or group. You do not become a Christian either by subscribing to a list of Christian beliefs. Neither do you become a Christian by changing religions. What does it mean then to become a Christian? Today, many generations of Assemblies of God men and women still hear His distinct voice in their memories. Dr. Eli Javier, in the field of leadership, was the first among equals. He led the Assemblies of God amidst great challenges, difficulties, and opportunities from the Christ Ambassadors to the Chi Alpha, from General Secretary to Assistant General Secretary to General Superintendent. His leadership in the Assemblies of God was marked by his passion to pursue the rule of God, knowing full well that the Church was God's, not any man's. He was a man with a vision of the Eternal, but whose feet were always grounded this side of eternity. He served as a bridge with the larger evangelical bodies and became an unofficial spokesman and apologist for the much ostracized Pentecostals. He gained access to the pulpits of the conciliar churches and also the evangelical churches. He was once dubbed as the Mr. Sunday School of the Philippines not only because of the radio program, but also because of his lead participation in the Sunday school conventions in the different regions of the country. When Asian Theological Seminary was organized, he was invited to serve as a member of the board, and later on to serve as an adjunct faculty member of the seminary. He also chaired the board of the Philippine Association of Christian Education. To this end, he had a place of honor and distinction in the broad evangelical community. Towards the last years of his ministry, 
he spoke with a prophetic voice to the 21st century Filipino Pentecostal Church. His words rang clear and true, piercing the dark clouds of uncertainty with the urgency of a man who had so much to share and yet had so little time. The program you have in your hands this evening has his I Have a Dream, a reflection he gave years ago. It remains a true prophetic call to the Assemblies of God. A few years ago, he was asked what legacy he would give to Filipino Pentecostals and what message he had to the 21st century Filipino pastors. This was what he said. My personal legacy would be uh, obedience. Obedience to what God uh, wants you to be and calls you to do. That would lead you to wherever you are in the world. That would be the, the best place, the safest place. You will not refuse to, to, to go to New York if the Lord wants to. Neither will you refuse staying if the Lord wants to. If there is anything in my life that uh, I can leave, it's not, it's not any accomplishment, but uh, a sense of obedience uh, to what the Lord wants uh, in our lives. It should be the love of Christ that should uh, compel us whatever act of service we do. It should be the love of Christ that should propel, not, not, uh, not any material gain, not any prospect of a position, but uh, it's the love of Christ that should propel us. And when, when that happens, regardless of, of the future, we will go on with uh, real determination to see the mandate done. This poster that has gone viral on the web says it so well. Therefore, on this hallowed of evenings, we give honor to whom honor is due. We honor the memory of our dear brother, Dr. Eli Javier. His walk of faith ended last July 10, 2012. He walked to his eternal home to join the Savior whom he so dearly loved and served. Yeah, I'm gonna 